Hello from the land of TV. This is King Cool. And welcome to the Toast Reviews. For those of you who don't know how this works, I watch a movie, I put something in the toaster, and I talk about it before my toast is done. And for February, we're doing Racial Harmony Month. You'll figure out the theme pretty soon. Today we're talking about Soul Man, the uh, comedy from 1986, I think it was. I don't have it in front of me. Um, and of course, to celebrate this, uh, this uh, month, I decided to do this entire presentation in blackface. As you see here, I got my gloves. They're gardening gloves, but whatever you can tell. I got my burnt cork here. So let's get this, uh, hey, what the, hey, there, hey, hey. I have been informed that what I was going to do was uh, offensive and uh, in most jurisdictions, including Rhode Island, I believe, illegal. Uh, I want to apologize to everyone and uh, so that I can understand the pain that my uh, fellow man has felt. I have voluntarily put myself in bondage so that I can... Hey, hey. I have since been told that what I just tried to do there was even worse. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to carve the words I'm sorry into this Watermelon. <laughs> okay, so apparently, I don't know how to not be offensive. Okay, I'm just making toast, all right? Today on the program, we have Shop and Stop brand multigrain. No one, no one's gonna attack me for this? No one's gonna, no one's attacking me randomly inside my house? No one? Okay. And here we go. No one? Okay. Alrighty. I'll turn that down a bit. Oh, okay. So, um, this is a comedy about uh, a young man who his parents tell him after he gets uh, accepted to Harvard that instead of the money that they've been squirreling away to pay for his trip to Harvard, they're going to buy a timeshare and tell him basically to fuck right off. Now, immediately at that point, I would be like, you know, I, you know, obviously going to Harvard is a thing of a lifetime. And I might just be like, all right, you know, you guys are, you know, you guys can basically kiss my ass and, you know, uh, send them to the timeshare and then possibly the timeshare is set, set on fire somehow. I don't know. Maybe just these things happen, but it, it's sort of an unreasonable circumstance that leads him to this. What happens is eventually he's like, uh-oh, um... Uh, oh, I can get a minority scholarship, but um, he has to take these pills to change his skin color. He, he has a friend, he's a chemist or something, who makes these pills for um, tanning pills um, that make him, he takes over the recommended dose. And I'm glad it's not like a makeup thing. I, obviously, he's done up with makeup. It doesn't explain how his hair changes um, to be sort of curly, but whatever. Um, and the thing is, uh, you know, he doesn't also affect his voice at all. He just is basically is doing his regular voice. And the funny thing is, I have a, one of my players, I haven't introduced him, I don't have him with me, who's just a Lando Calrissian action figure. And if I ever was going to use him, just so I don't get beat up, he would have my unaffected and unchanged voice. Because, you know, it would be sort of offensive, I guess, for him to be like, yo, homie, or whatever. You know, even me to do that is probably pretty bad, but whatever. Um, he does do it at one point. Um, the only scene that I really like, which is that scene in every comedy where too many people are in the same place at once who don't know about the mistaken identity. And this one's actually three-pronged because there's a lady there who likes the guy, um, but doesn't know that he's also... Are you almost done? Holy cow. I don't want to push any further than that because he's going to burn. He look up here to me. Maybe should have spent less time screwing around with a with a silly intro. Focusing on the toast. Um, so there's a girl. He doesn't know that he's dating a different girl, an African American girl. Um, they sh and then she shows up, and who does not know both that he's dating her and that he's actually white. And then his parents show up, who don't know that he has done this to his own skin. And so he has to try to control the situation. 
And as far as those scenes go, that one's pretty good. But it really is the only scene in the movie that really works. Like, there's a scene where, um, uh, James Earl Jones, he, uh, who plays the, um, the law professor, he goes out and says, uh, you know, uh, what's his face makes a joke. And he says, if you're willing to make jokes in my classroom, could you at least make certain that they're funny? And it's like, yeah, like, that's the whole movie right there, is the fact that, yeah, he gets in these wacky situations, um, but it's not really that funny. It's not a, and let me be clear, it's not offensive either, I don't think so, at least. But there is something rather prescient about setting this in Boston. I've, you know, I've talked to some of my, um, co-workers, one of my co-workers once mentioned, like, yeah, Boston is, like, the most racist city in the world. <laughs> in the world, but, in the Northeast, at least. Like, his father was a delivery guy. He would go there and get crapped on for being black. And it's like... This was like, you know, the 90s or something. This was after this movie was made. Um, one girl's writing a report and she's gonna call it Shades of Grey, so that's a bit different. Um, oh, what else is there to say? It's just not really that funny. Like, maybe it's just because it's an 80s comedy. I'm not really certain how much I like those either. Um, Julie Louis Dreyfus is in this, so that's always good. Um, and it ends with a courtroom scene where they're gonna work out exactly how to discipline this guy for doing this, because what this guy did commit was was fraud, okay? And it's sort of like at the end, you sort of don't want him to get his just desserts, but nevertheless, oh, I don't know. This this that one scene right there about the one hour something mark is pretty much the only one I really liked, but um. Everything else was just sort of like, alright, please get on with it. Uh... Nope, oh, sorry about that. Um, and that's the way I got. I was just thinking about whether I was going to bring the players in, but... Nah. Is that really... I, I don't have them right now, so nevertheless. Uh, what will be next in, uh, Racial Harmony Month? Uh, find out next time. Thank you all for watching. This is King Cool. Drive home safe. That's what I like to call a $4 joke. By the way, if you're wondering how many times they say it, just once.